Oral communications from the public. We have quite a few speakers. Um, we have two topics with several speakers and then a bunch of other ones. We're going to stick to the three minute rule. If you haven't filled out a card and you wish to address the council on any item on the agenda, please do so and give the card to the city clerk. And we will begin with, was that Mr. Dun Williamson walking forward? We'll begin with you. Followed by uh, Dr. George Bellos and then Norman Perez. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. My name is Don Williamson. I live at 2467 Emerson Drive in Corona. I have lived in Corona since 1957 when I was three years old. I have many people who are here tonight have watched Corona uh, be changed, have our buildings torn down, rebuilt. I've seen people come in and, and, and uh, subdivide property and build things. I never thought I would see that happen at a cemetery. Not in Corona, not anywhere. Uh, we have what's known as Potter's Field on Circle City Drive in Corona. It's below Sunny Slope. It's on Circle City Drive, not Sunny Slope. Uh, it was started in 1892 uh, by citizens. It was operated by citizens of Corona until 1988 when it was turned over to a company uh, associated with Cresson. The gentleman who was turned over to in 1988 is still in charge of it. Uh, it was supposed to become part of Crestline, but for some reason it ended up still as part of the, uh, as a nonprofit organization. Now, I'm putting up here, over the years, the Potter's Field off of, off of uh, uh, Circle City Drive has been decimated. The, the gravestones have disappeared, the, gray, the markers have disappeared. Significant cement markers have disappeared. Now, uh, one woman who's pictured here, Pat Merritt, the late Pat Merritt, fought this. She fought this and fought this alone. There were investigations. They were coming close to finding out exactly who's buried down there. Well, all of a sudden in 1994, after she was making some headway, they ran out of money. They ran out of money and they stopped. The gentleman who's still in charge of the cemetery, who's president of this organization, in his tenure, has oversaw the destruction. He has no involvement in this community. He allowed this to happen. Over the years, over the decades, Coronans, kids and nuddies, the vice mayor, went down there and helped keep that up. Now, I live in a town where I sat in this audience and I saw where we can compel a, a, a private business to put brick in a hospital building when we have never had a brick in a hospital building in the four hospitals we've had downtown because inside the circle is sacred. This is indeed sacred ground. And, I, and I, when I first saw this last month, I called each one of our city council members, and I want everyone to know each one of them called me back. Each one of them are as concerned as I am. I am, I, I am a, I'm receiving a groundswell of anger over this situation. And, and this, this, these operators are, are getting away with, with a, very, a very disturbing thing. Now, when you think of nonprofit, you think of people who get paid. I got on the internet and I saw the nonprofit's tax form. The two operators, there's two operators there. The guy from 1988 and his partner, they each in 2012 made $43,000. 20 seconds, then. Not only do they get $43,000 a year, they have a separate operation where they process all of the uh, land that they sell. So they decided to do this and then they process it through and they get a commission on top of that. There has got to be, this is a major problem in this town, and I hope that the city council, the city attorney, we can do something, review this man's business license, and take this property back into the local hands where it belongs. Thank you very much. Thank you, Don. Dr. Bellows. Good evening. My name is Dr. George Bellows. I live at 1026 Golden Meadow Drive here in Corona. been living here since 1983 came here from Virginia. I'm supporting this issue because I think what's happening at the cemetery is heinous. It's a crime, and we need to look into this to, to the extent the law allows us and what is legal. I've given you a copy of uh, some considerations. I don't know if you have those before you. And I'd like to just read them to you in my three minutes span. Considerations for the city of Corona to review as these relate to Sunny Slope Cemetery of Corona. Background. 
in the business, Sunny Slopes Cemetery cannot operate well without a city license, uh, business license. This gives Corona some jurisdiction over the operations of the Sunny Slopes Cemetery. Of course, we'll uh, verify all of that. Therefore, we request that, one, based upon the discrepancy between the number of persons that, are, that the cemetery claims are buried in Potter's Field and the number of names listed in the records of the Corona Library, that the business license for Sunny Slope Cemetery be reviewed. Two, until an accounting can be made of the buried locations of the 600 to 800 buried in the Potter's Field, that all burials in Potter's Field be suspended. Three, the city established an ordinance that requires Sunny Slope Cemetery to allow photos to be taken on the cemetery grounds. Four, the city of Corona established an ordinance that requires the cemetery to make records available of all interred, and here's an anecdote uh, validated, uh, given to me. The, the granddaughter of Bernice Todd, a daughter of founding father William H. Jameson, and namesake for the local elementary school, was denied access to her family history held by the cemetery in the name of, quote unquote, privacy. I also understand that there's a, a Halloween party, that's not a party, a celebration usually held at the cemetery. I, I'm under the impression that it's been canceled. Uh, my wife and I were there. I don't know why that was canceled. My wife and I were there uh, to, to, to look at the Senate uh, policy. There is something going on there. And if people are trying to keep this secret, I think the city should help us. We are getting, receiving receipt from, from the uh, individuals. We are seeking support from legal uh, entities and the state seconds. commissions. And thank you very much for your attention. I appreciate all of your work. Thank you. Let me just correct that, Dr. Bellows. It's the cemetery stroll. The cemetery stroll. Not a party. Yeah, yes, it's the It's a historical um, couple hours that tells about some of the people that are buried there. So it's not a party. No. And it was not canceled by the cemetery. Yeah. It was canceled by the organization. And someone just brought to my attention, make sure. This is not an issue about the Latino community, although they make up the majority of the six to 800 people who are buried there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, my name is Norman Perez. I'm a citizen here in Corona. I uh, just wanted to talk in behalf of the Potter's Field issue. Um, my grandfather is buried there. He's the only uh, left standing tombstone. The other ones, the crosses that were out there, I don't know where they're at now. I remember being five years old and playing out there when my dad and my uncle would take flowers to my grandfather. I don't know what has happened to all those crosses or the uh, markers, but it looks like it's been destroyed. Um, it's been talked about, Sunny Slope mentions that there's 258 bodies supposedly buried there, and there's a list through the Corona Library of 600. Um, I don't know how, how the difference is, but it's funny, my, it's kind of interesting my cousin called the cemetery last week and asked to see a map of where the bodies are buried they have mentioned that it's being developed they don't have a map yet so it's kind of interesting that Sunny Slope does not have a map of where the berries are bodied in Potter's Field um, the demonstration that I have up here it represents Potter's Field and the center portion of the sunny slope. <clears throat> Each burial plot is four by nine. So I made a little cutout of what it would take to build, to put 600 plots. If you look at the map, this takes up 600 plots. 
same size as Potter Field. So that means there has to be at least 600 bodies in Potter's Field if the claim is correct through the Cornell Library. 258 doesn't seem like too many people that have passed away in uh, about a 50 year span or whatever it may be. So I think uh, this needs to be looked over and we need to do something about it because we've got to save Corona's history. Okay? Thank you. Thanks.